Thank you for joining us on Central Mass Chronicles. My name is Hank Stoltz, and this is a program in which we are always looking at things, whether it be local, whether it be state, or whether it be national, with a Central Mass point of view. Today, we're keeping it local, because if you have been following the news, then you know that Superintendent Maureen Benenda, Worcester School Superintendent Maureen Benenda, may be in trouble. A couple of different groups that are calling for her contract not to be extended or for her to be fired. And let's begin with our, our panel. We have Roberta Schaefer, Ike McBride joining us, long time at the Boys and Girls Club, Randy Feldman, who is certainly familiar to all Central Mass uh, Chronicles viewers, immigration lawyer. And Randy, why don't I start with you on this? And I'm going to start with that very broad topic and see where you all take it. But is Worcester School Superintendent Maureen Benenda in trouble? The easy answer to me is she should not be. Okay, but I don't want to minimize the complaint. Right? I think the complaint is real, and I think it has a lot of validity, and I think it's a national problem, not a Worcester problem. Right? The Let me just let's let's back up then just for a moment and set up then what the complaint What's is, the problem? and that really and the, and it really is that, uh, and as you point out, this is not something that began with Superintendent Maureen Benenda, but the fact that particularly in Worcester schools there is a disparity when it comes to suspensions, and Latino students are suspended at a much higher rate than white students. And the absentee issue is much greater with Latino students. Mm -hmm. And the, the staffing, the teachers, the amount of teachers, the number of teachers do not at all reflect the minority population in the city of Worcester. Um, and uh, whether implicit bias or cultural insensitivity, there are things that go on that should not go on. And all of those things are very, very true. Um, but the mayor's plan to try to rectify that and Maureen Benenda's approach to it and Marina, Maureen Benenda's track record should give her the ability to correct the situation, which she is trying to do. There should be a lot more recruitment of minority teachers, right? And there should be, what the minority community often says is there should be better treatment of minority uh, teachers once they're on staff. And that will then allow them to tell friends, neighbors, and people from across the country to come here. And they should have a much bigger outreach for minority teachers because the, the advantage of having a minority teacher or administrator in a classroom or at a school is invaluable to that minority student, both as a symbol and as someone who understands the cultural nuances of their upbringing. And the, and the school will say that they have been trying for many years, so there seems to be some problems maybe, and Ike, if you want to, you know, how you want to weigh in on this, but part of what also seems to have set all of this off, although it, it seems to be two separate groups, school committee Dante Comparetto, school committee member Dante Comparetto, uh, seemed to kind of get in on this right at the exact moment. He writes to his supporters about crazy amounts of racism at the Worcester Public Schools, and he's talking about this institutionalized racism. It was taken, the comment, as meaning that there's just plain racism in Worcester Public Schools, meaning teachers are racist, and that's why you're seeing so many suspensions. Well, I, I think there's a couple of different levels to this, and I mean, to, to Randy's point, it is more systemic than anything else, I think. I think you're dealing with something that is something that's much larger than one person being the superintendent. Um, you know, looking at it on a much broader scale, you have to understand what you're dealing with, and that means having some very difficult, hard conversations for people that they don't want to have. Um, when you're talking about racism and you're going into that, you know, some of our most educated people are struggling with making the difference or differentiating between racism and prejudice. We're not calling teachers prejudice. We're not saying that teachers are treating people a certain way because, you know, they have a hatred towards them because they look a certain way. This is more of a systemic thing that it's always been that way. These are, these are things that have always kind of been in place. So we're just following the status quo. And it's time to shake up the status quo is basically what these groups are telling everybody. Now, is, is Maureen the person that needs to be the, the chopping block? I don't know that that's the case either. I mean, I think that if these things are brought to her, that she would try to address them. Um, you know, there definitely is room for training or there has to be some sort of room for training to get people to understand what they're dealing with. But I mean, these are systems that have been in place forever. I mean, you know, we obviously we know about the judicial system, we know about law enforcement, we know about, you know, the medical system, the media. We know about all these systems, but the first system that any of us, especially kids of color, are ever introduced to is the school system. And that is something that goes across the board. And, it, and it's something that does need to be checked on and worked out. So it, 
Roberta, is there then this unconscious bias in the Worcester school systems? Can a teacher uh, not be racist but have a racist act where because of unconscious bias they look at a Latino student, a white student, and think this white student, uh, boy, I got to give you a break, you're headed off to, to college, and for the Latino student, ah, oh, this, th th this kid's a troublemaker, and this is the unconscious bias. Okay, I guess I'd like to go back a step <clears throat> and um, I would like specific examples of ha the racism in the Worcester Public Schools. All I hear is people screaming about it, but I'd like specific examples. The fact that Latino students are suspended at a higher rate than uh, white students doesn't tell me what is really what is going on first of all all the rates have come down i just wrote about this in, in yesterday's telegram but the percentage said, hasn't yes it has not as not as much i mean there's still a wide disparity oh, wait, between there's, the there's numbers the, 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 the hispanic now i i am sorry i don't have it in front of me it's about but 20 it was percent no oh, suspension oh i thought you meant absenteeism sorry. no so absenteeism is a whole other story which clearly leads to other problems that can lead to suspension. If you don't go to school and you haven't done the work, then obviously you have a problem. So when you get to class, you know, you're bound to, you know, you're bored, you act out because you haven't done the work. You, you don't know what's going on in the class. Well, I, so I will wait, say, wait, but, no, I, but no, I did, me, but, no, right, no, but I see, but I, I looked at the, but I looked at those numbers, but I, but I want to stay on this for five a moment. Point, so 5.1 down to 4.1 for Hispanics, and it was something like, 3.1 now for whites. So there's a disparity, but we're not talking about 20% for Hispanics and 2% for whites and 5% for blacks. The, the, how many has, white students and how many black students? I, I, don't, I don't have those numbers. No. What I have is the percentage. And all, but all of that is available. And the idea that um, the school department was hiding this, I think is bogus. But here's my, here, I'm sorry, here's my point, that it has become just um, um, ordinary course of, it's not conversation, it's people yelling at one another, um, cool. telling them that they're racist. Now, if, if you say that to people, naturally, they get their dander up. And you have to have specific examples of where this is occurring in the schools. Now, let's, not, let's forget about the, uh, you know, whether it exists in the justice system or you know, where else. We're talking about the Worcester Public Schools. Okay. And no, yeah. no, uh, well, just a minute. School and to I prison think, pipeline is, is a no, huge, it's not, it is a big me. part of what excuse they are talking me. about. Excuse me, if you, you don't have expulsions in the Worcester Public Schools, no kid is left out on the street. Suspension means it's either in school or at another school. There have been zero expulsions. We do not have expulsions in the Worcester Public Schools. I put that in my article and they edited it out. That is an absolute fact. But here's my point. This business of calling everybody by name, but you know, you're racist, you're racist, and having fights in public this way without being able to sit down and, and, and talk to people in a civil term. What is this? Is this the new uh, black privilege that I can, you can go around calling people you know, racist at the, this at the drop of a hat, this is not going to get us any place. So, and I find, I find it absolutely despicable that Clive has published articles um, where he attacks people. He attacked Mon, John Manfredo with, you know, with also, and, and, you know, John Manfredo, I'm sorry, you know, didn't give a very good defense of himself. Mary Mullaney, what, you know, what is this? You can just attack people gratuitously? Let's bring, without... Ike, we're going to start with you. Okay. Let's, uh, and let's begin there with more of this about what has been going on and what has been written about in the media, whether it's Bill Shaner in Worcester Magazine or whether it's Clive McFarland in the Telegram and Gazette, and that's where we're going to pick it up on Central Mass Chronicles. Are you or someone you know struggling to keep your house warm? Worcester Community Action Council may be able to help. Money through the federally funded Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, commonly known as Fuel Assistance, are now available to help pay home heating bills. Whether you rent or own or heat by oil, gas, electric, wood, or any other heating source, assistance is based on the number of people living in your household and their combined income. A single household making up to $35,000 a year may be eligible. A family of four can be making as much as $68,000 and be eligible. Visit WCAC.net today. 
Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch and UMass Memorial Healthcare informed you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. Hey, let's just let's just clear the air here. Do you know why we have a measles outbreak? Because we have the internet. No, the internet spreads. Stupid. Stupid information. That guy lost his license to practice medicine, everything. And yet, his BS lives on online because just put it online and everybody believes it. You're listening to The Jim Polito Show, your safe space. We all sat here with our hands folded during that, and now we will get back to talking about some of the issues here on Central Mass Chronicles, including, let's pick up, there's a couple of articles, one that Roberta was just referencing, and that is by Clive McFarland, and it is about John Monfredo. And John Monfredo, in a call to talk of the Commonwealth, brought up uh, in defending Superintendent Maureen Benenda, he talked about the fact that in all of his decades in uh, the Worcester school systems, he hadn't seen this racism. This became a meme in which Dante uh, Comparetto, school committee member, fellow school committee member, uh, 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 well, uh, attacked him, put up above the meme with that quote, you know, put up uh, talking about white privilege and the words white supremacist also showing up in that in that meme. Also, Bill Shainer writing about uh, when it came to the battle for sex ed. So there's some overlap here writing uh, about how it is that do we get the full story or are things decided before they get to the public and there isn't transparency. We're going to get into both of those. Ike, let's start with you and some of the things that Roberta had to say and then we can pick up on some of the columnists. Well, first and foremost, let me just clear the air that there has never ever in America ever been black privilege <laughs> and I would love to see when that does happen. Um, but before we go any further than that, Lots of people are using let's, it. let's let's <laughs> let's bring it back to the whole examples of racism. I mean, obviously, we've talked about the school to prison pipeline. We've talked about the le third grade reading level and things like that. But let's just go. I mean, we understand that the standardized testing. I mean, this year you had the MCAS come out with the question in the in the MCAS that was culturally insensitive to kids. I mean, so there are things that are already there that are just basic things. But I mean, let's start from the very basics of the fact that you, you look into a history book of any person of color and you're taught that you your history begins as defeated people you're taught that you begin as savages you begin as less than human and that's something that permeates throughout our culture and it goes on forever and that's something that it, in Worcester Public Schools or any other school department so for someone like a John Manfredo to sit there and say that he's never seen racism in all his years I mean let's be very clear and we talk about suspension rates and all that good stuff there is something that's very clear. There is a certainty of punishment, of nth degree punishment, when you are a kid of color. And when I, and it, I, I want to go, and I, I don't speak for John Manfredo. I believe that his point, just as Dante says, hey, I was completely taken out of context. I'm not saying that there's just crazy amounts of racism, meaning all Worcester teachers are, are racist. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about unconscious bias or, or, or call it what you will. I think John Manfredo's point is saying that, hey, uh, I've been on the school committee and I've been a principal, and let me tell you, Dante, you've been on the school committee. Where's all the talk been about racism over the last few years? And I think he, again, I don't, I don't well, speak I mean, for I, him, but I think that's more of his point, that well, this hasn't been an issue. I think you get issue. to a point where you, you, you still, when, I mean, like, like to your point, Roberta, I mean, when you say, you know, racist, you know, immediately the attack comes and, you know, defense, I'm not a racist person. And Worcester Public School teachers, I mean, the vast majority, I mean, there's no racist people that are working at Worcester Public Schools. I mean, these people care about the kids they're working with. There's no question of that. But there are systems that are in place and there are things that have been established for, for centuries, years, whatever you want to call it, that are there that have to be checked, that have to be changed, that have to be looked at. And that's not saying that teachers are doing this, and I mean, it could be unconscious, and for some, they may not matter. But I would argue that the vast majority, if they were educated and they understood what it was that they didn't see, that they would change what they could do. I, let me ask you this. Do you want the history book uh, to eliminate 
the whole f founding, which talks about, you know, which uh, talks about slavery. And, no, and no, so, not absolutely not. So, but so I mean, why, how, but, but so like, why can't you, you, but why, why don't, why doesn't an African American child know that there were 23, you know, Egyptian dynasties before Alexander sets foot on African soil? Why doesn't, uh, why doesn't a Latin child know about, you know, the civilizations that were in place? Because we're, we're taught that civilization comes when we start, when we pick up a Bible and we put on a shirt that well, these people were not civil before, you know what I mean? Because th that is very true. Then in the, in the class, there's, I mean, I've looked at the K through 12 curriculum. I was on the State Board of Education for 11 years. I worked on the history framework. There are grades that discuss the other civilizations. No, they, don't, they can't possibly cover it in, in, you know, in great depth, but they are certainly discussed, whether it's the Egyptian, Mesopotamia, um, you know, uh, what happened in Latin America with the Spaniards coming in. Nobody today, let's just, you know, I mean, all let, of this let's is put it back there. Into, let's put it back into the Worcester school system and what we're yeah, talking about. So yeah. Dante Comparetto, does he have a, a point when he is sort of saying, you know, man, I got to take the two by four. I mean, again, I don't speak for Dante either, but I got to take the two by four. I got to get people's attention and the way in which he is railing or he has become a part of the problem in the way in which he is going about things. As far as I'm concerned, he's part of the problem and the way he's going about things because it's not as though the, I don't know about the, the committee that the mayor appointed and what was accomplished and so on. It seemed to me from what I read in the paper, the big fight was over releasing data and using Worcester State data and so on and so forth. And, and then, uh, you know, um, the mayor suddenly, you know, says, oh, well, here's my plan. And Maureen has, I, I don't know, I, 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 don't, I don't know that there was an, a deliberate attempt to hide any of this, it comes out every year, and they have to report it to the State Department of. of and I don't think that Randy, this, this, the mayor came up with this plan overnight. I think this is things all of these groups have been working on for the last number of years. So what's the point of doing it this way? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the question. I, I want to get a little broader, just very quickly. Let's go back to the Incas and the Aztecs yeah. and the Egyptians. Let's go back to that. Right, that history is not preferenced in our system because we think our traditions are from the Western culture. Okay, listen, and Randy. No, 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 no. When, when we talk about preferences and privileges, we privilege the Western culture because we're a part of the Excuse Western me. culture and it is the developed into the basis of our government and our basically well, Anglo you culture. But you're going broader a, to I'm bring sorry. it back. To Dante. Basic, okay, so that's what I, hold on. Let me, let me just get to Dante. The basic function of the public schools okay. is to teach we're gonna, American history because we are all American citizens. And, well, not yeah. all. Yeah, we but, I, 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 but but we, we wish want we were. to. But because the point as long as is, we're black Americans, we're no, not American you, citizens. You I mean, American just like citizen. no. But the point the, the point yeah, I want to make we're always going to be okay. so, you know. So, so here, you, so the point is to teach our tradition, which is mo I'm sorry, it's most important because every country teaches its own tradition first, then. You learn or about primarily. other cultures. I'm not disagreeing. What I'm trying to say is that Dante yeah, Camparetto, we wouldn't, even though we all love civility, we all love dialogue, we all love open communication, nobody likes attack. If Dante Camparetto didn't do that, we would not be having this discussion on this show today. So that's the hard part of this whole thing, right? The whole idea, uh, here's another one, here's another broad one that the, the, the Dante Camparetto attack, pinpointedness, the Black Lives Matter in your uh, face kind of deal with this, the, the, the whole idea of a bias prejudice and racism not being just a legal matter but a social matter and we want it on the agenda all of that doesn't happen without pinpoint attacks on the you issue. You know what's interesting on this Randy yeah. I'm in and, and, and uh, to to I can remember to I'm not sure that it comes out the way that it has publicly it seems to me that what Dante did was he writes something to his supporters he doesn't expect it to get published uh, this week in Worcester picks it up, Patrick Sargent puts it out there. All of a sudden people are talking about it. All of a sudden I think groups such as uh, District Councilor Sarai Rivera, I think Isabel, uh, groups that uh, you know, uh, had already sort of been working on this and may have already had some dissatisfaction with the superintendent kill. Wow, something just exploded that we've been working on behind the scenes, the mayor's been working on, and all of a sudden this has, be, has become an issue. I'm not sure that Dante and Sarai Rivera, for example, 
are on the same side at this or see perfectly eye to eye about how to handle this. I think Dante kind of just hit a moment. I, I think your, your analysis is 100% correct. But what I'm trying to say, there are larger macro issues that are being reflected in the Worcester Public Schools. That's why I don't blame Maureen Absolutely. Benenda because she's a person of goodwill. I don't blame John Mafredo because he's a person of goodwill. I don't blame Mary Mullaney because she has every right to do what she did. Just the oh. same as the Worcester Coalition for Education Equity and the Youth Civic Union has every right to do what they do. This that is America. This is like the debate we take. That sounds like a segue. Let's pick that up. Mary Mullaney, former school committee member, and if you read Bill Shaner's piece in Worcester Magazine, if you haven't, I would encourage you to go back. It has just been picked up by Commonwealth Magazine, where they have just been adding on to it uh, as well. But this is an article that Bill Shaner wrote about how do things really get done in Worcester. When it came to sex education, for example, uh, was it a bag job? Was the fix in? Or is everything been transparent? Are you or someone you know struggling to keep your house warm? Worcester Community Action Council may be able to help. Money through the federally funded Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, commonly known as Fuel Assistance, are now available to help pay home heating bills. Whether you rent or own or heat by oil, gas, electric, wood, or any other heating source, assistance is based on the number of people living in your household and their combined income. A single household making up to $35,000 a year may be eligible. A family of four can be making as much as $68,000 and be eligible. Visit WCAC.net today. I might have been divisive, but you know something? I didn't take any crap from anybody. You don't have to be me. No one's going to be like me. I'm a wild man. It's time to grow a backbone. Stop being a nice guy. Be a leader. And, oh, you know, you're picking on this race group, or we're picking on that race group. That's a bunch of crap. You want to take me on? 508-755-0058. That's where you take me on. Happy to have you. I'll go with you anytime you want. Come and get me. Say well, everybody, and don't worry, just be happy. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. 81 kids were out sick Monday, 64 were still out yesterday. A Worcester auto body shop owner is charged in connection to an extensive motor vehicle fraud scheme. Worcester's Board of Health hears from a hospital about the issue of unclean bodies. Reporters in the field and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. So if you haven't been following uh, along, there has been a, a battle over sex education in Worcester. Do we go with what is being described as an abstinence-based system? Do we go with a more progressive system? Do the kids need more straight talk? Now, uh, right now, I don't think we have much of, of anything, if I understand correctly, because there has been a lot of political pushback on both sides for both programs. One group doesn't like one program, not enough straight talk. The other feels that well, when you're talking about playing hide the condom games, that may be too much straight talk for them. So uh, where we are right now is there was an article that was written by Bill Shaner in which through uh, Freedom of Information Act, he was able to get a number of, of emails. And what he has come up with is he says, wow, you know, I think that if you look at these emails and many the ones that he cites are the ones that were written by former school committee member Mary Mullaney and he says this seems as if there was a lot of pressure that was being put on the mayor on the superintendent Brian O'Connell who is a school committee member Roberta I'm going to start with you I, I think that there's really two issues here one Bill Shaner, Worcester Magazine is an alternative weekly newspaper. They write with a point of view. In this case, there is no doubt that Bill Shaner himself uh, wants to have a, a more progressive form of sex education. He approaches the article from that. Uh, it's different than if you were writing in a, in a, in a newspaper like, like the Telegram. Uh, the other thing that I, that I would say just, just quickly is that there seems to be two issues. So one, I think Bill doesn't like what Mary Mullaney has to say in the emails and her arguments. Two, though, is that he absolutely sets it up that the reason that it never came to the forefront is because of the pressure that Mary Mullaney was what was bringing. I read just before we came on the air, Commonwealth Magazine actually spoke with uh, Mary Mullaney and she said, listen, I was one person. I didn't do it anonymously. I signed my name. I made my opinion known as I believe dozens if not hundreds of others did on both sides of the sex ed okay. question. So I believe email will be the death of us all. Um, that's for starters because again once you put something in print it's uh, like uh, talking about it in public because nothing nothing is private. 
So the only way you can, so she had every right to do that. If I had been her, I would have had the conversation privately. So that there's, there's no record, but that's how we negotiate on, on such matters. So Mary Mullaney did it from her perspective, and there were lots of people obviously pushing from both sides to have one or the other. Now the fact is, at this moment, the school committee is, in, is divided, and so it was shelved, and it will be taken up within the next few months. Um, here again, I think that there is probably room for compromise, because what the mayor said at the last uh, uh, meeting when it was discussed was, you know, um, we're going to go with the Michigan, but we're going to add some stuff to it. So we don't know what he's going to add to it and how much objection there will be to that. But at some point, if sex education is a requirement and I, by the uh, state, and I don't, I'm not sure, I, th I think it is, but I'm not even sure of that, that there has to be something and it can't just be abstinence. We know that because kids are engaged in it without, uh, you know, and, and they're not uh, abstaining. 55 middle schoolers were pregnant. Yeah, well, right? that's, 55 that's, middle schoolers okay, so were I'm pregnant. Okay, so I'm saying, I mean, there has to the be something year. more than just saying, don't do it because the kids apparently are not listening. So there has to be something more. It has to be well thought out and it has to be, you know, researched and studied carefully so that we come out with something that makes sense that, that the majority of people in Worcester who have their kids in the schools, at least those people, can live with it. And that's how our system works. And we've got to get back to that. All right, so the, the issues brought up in the, in the articles, uh, twofold. One, <coughs> uh, you know, do we, was it just, uh, was it killed without, they, Bill Shaner starts that article with there's a two hour public hearing, which you know what, you should have all saved your breath because it was a dog and pony show, Randy. Mary Mullaney, Brian O'Connell, and John Manfredo, for me, are so out of touch. Does she have a right to do what she did? Of course she has a right to do what she did. But are you kidding me? Like really these pe 55 people in middle school got pregnant and we have a chance to teach um, some sort of proactive thing so people won't become pregnant and we, d we shouldn't teach it See, because of Mary Mullaney you rely, Mary Mullaney, what you, say is, when, when what you have Roberta, to say is she has a different opinion We gave you a lot of time you. to talk here, Roberta. Well, Ma Mary Mullaney <laughs> talked about the importance of family values, she, which, which is also in individual okay. accountability. You know, fair enough. But the importance of belief in God and adherence to God, uh, an obedience to God, that's an argument? I really? jump in here Honestly? or we won't have a well, I'm, I'm, lot of time. I'm, I'm definitely in agreement with Randy on this. I mean, the, some of the things that she said in the article were you basically making assumptions about people, you know, that you obviously aren't in contact or don't have a real connection with. So you are making assumptions about people there's based a on... Now, did there's we, a certain segment of the population that agrees with Mary Mullaney. Yeah, exactly. See, and those sure. are the people so, that are making decisions for those people no, that don't agree but with Mary Mullaney. Here, here, that's here, that's here, where the problem here. comes in. They're well, not. That's so are we not getting enough... So are we not getting enough transparency because I'm not convinced that if it had been the more quote-unquote progressive model if that I would have had a majority of people in Worcester going going forward does it have to be either or by the way or can we have something else I mean we're gonna have to have oh something else eventually we're gonna have to have some sort yeah. of a compromise you're absolutely right because I mean the problem is sex education much like the racism topic is a very touchy topic you're never gonna please everybody and you're probably going to offend people before you begin to please them so when you come at something like this, I mean, there are people who are going to come from the religious side of it. There are people who are going to come from the, you know, the personal and moral side of it. Are you including the LBGT community when you're having these conversations? I mean, how much? You know, all these things are part of this. So, you know, the, you know, there has to be something that's really looked at that's going to be very inclusive, but it's also so going to be we just understand. We just out. have 30 seconds, okay, so I'm going to just wrap up here that we are all, because I'm going to bring it back to where we started, everybody on the panel in agreement that Maureen Benenda deserves to have the opportunity as superintendent to try and and yeah. address these these issues? Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. All those yeah. years, head of South High School, the way she had all this outreach to bring all these services to South High School, her lifelong commitment, absolutely yes. Uh, but but she does have to meet certain criteria that have been And I won't out. say that I would not be opposed to new blood just on the outside. But that's, that is uh, the, the last word for this edition. Thank you all very much for joining us on Central Mass Chronicles. Thank you.